Hi, and welcome to another Rubrik Quick Start video. I'm Mike Preston, and today we're going to take a look at how we can get up and running by installing and configuring the Rubrik plugin for vRealize. Now, the Rubrik vRealize plugin basically allows us to integrate Rubrik data management tasks into our already existing vRealize automation environment. Think of things like requiring our end users to select a Rubrik SLA domain when they're provisioning their VMs. This means things like data protection are not going to be an afterthought, as they're going to be required to select their SLA domain, required to think about their data protection policies during the provisioning process. Also, imagine our end users being able to do their own file level restores on their virtual machines that they've deployed. No longer do they have to wait for IT operations to get involved in order just to restore a few files. Or take that even further, allow our end users to create duplicate copies of their virtual machines for testing and development purposes. All of this can be done using the Rubrik plugin for vRealize. So with that, let's get started. All right, what we're going to do today can really be broken down into two simple steps. First, we're going to install and configure the Rubrik plugin for vRealize. This is going to be done within vRealize Orchestrator. Then we'll use VMware's Cloud Client in order to import some Rubrik sample blueprints and resource actions. This allows us to get a head start on building out some of those self-service features within VRA. So first, let's tackle the Rubrik plugin for vRealize. Okay, so here we are on Rubrik's GitHub page, and you can see we're in the Rubrik-vRealize repository. This repository is gonna hold anything and everything to do with the integration between Rubrik and vRealize automation. So to get started, let's go ahead and pull down the Rubrik plugin for vRealize. It can be found in the file listing here under com.rubrik.devops.package. We're going to go ahead and click on that, and then we'll click download. Okay, let's head into VRO now and actually install the plugin. So here we are in vRealize Orchestrator, and the first thing we're going to have to do is switch from the run view into either the design or the administrator view. This is going to allow us to get access to the packages tab, which we need in order to import the vRealize plugin. So let's move over to the packages tab. And then we're simply going to click on the icon that allows us to import a package. Here, we're going to select that package that we just downloaded off the Rubrik GitHub site, click Open. We're going to need to import the certificate that comes with the package, and then it's going to take a minute to process everything and read through the different workflows and actions and different things that are included within the Rubrik plugin for vRealize. When it's done, we're going to be presented with a nifty little screen like this, which shows us anything and everything that's included within that package. Now I'm going to go ahead and say select all because I want to bring every single thing that we have within the package into my VRO instance and go ahead and click import selected elements. Again, this is going to take some time to process everything and get everything installed into vRealize Orchestrator. But when it's finished, we're going to be able to head over to the workflows tab here, expand out our library, and we should see a rubric DevOps folder. If we expand that out, we'll see all of those workflows that we just imported. So we've completed the actual installation of the plugin itself, and now we just have to configure it. Now, the way the Rubrik plugin for vRealize works is that it actually sets up your Rubrik cluster as a REST host inventory item within VRO. Now, we don't have to do this manually. Thankfully, we have a nifty little workflow here that we can click on and run called rubric add cluster instance. So configuring this plugin is as simple as right clicking on this workflow and starting it. So what we need to do is we need to give our cluster a name. I'm going to go ahead and call this one cluster A. We need to give it a URL. And this is simply going to be you know, the FQDN or the IP of our actual cluster or one of the nodes within our cluster. Obviously, we're going to need to provide some authentication to the cluster itself. And then the connection timeout and operation timeout values of 30 and 60 respectively are best left at their default values. 
Additionally, if you have any proxies that you're going through, you can click on the proxy settings and define that as well. I don't have any proxy settings in this environment, so I'm going to go ahead and just click Submit. So this is going to trigger off that rubric add cluster instance workflow, and it's going to go ahead and do a bunch of things, and I can see that already it's completed. So if I head over to my inventory, I can take a look at what I have for REST hosts, and I should see cluster A. We'll head down into HTTP REST. And this looks like it's going to need a refresh. And there it is, cluster A. So for all intents and purposes, we've installed and configured the rubric plugin for vRealize. If we wanted, we could head into vRealize automation and start using those built-in workflows and actions that we just imported and add them to existing blueprints or create new blueprints that allow us to do things like live mounts and instant recoveries and different things like that. But as I mentioned at the start of the video, Rubrik provides a bunch of sample blueprints and sample resource actions that we can go ahead and utilize and import into our environment. This makes things a little bit easier and gives us a bit of a jump start as we don't have to build things from scratch. So with that said, let's take a look at how we can import those. So as we head back into GitHub, remember I said anything and everything surrounding Rubrik and vRealize can be found on our GitHub repository, rubrik-vrealize. We can see down here that we have vra underscore blueprints.zip. Let's go ahead and let's download those. Now, in order to import these into our vRealize automation environment, we're going to need something called the vRealize Cloud Client. Now, this is a free utility from VMware. It basically acts as a CLI interface to our VRA environment. So go ahead and download that for the respective operating system you have and fire it up. So here we are in my VMware Cloud Client instance, and you can see I've already gone ahead and logged into my VRA instance with the command VRA login and user pass, providing a username and password, as well as specifying what tenant I want to log into and the address to my VRA server. Now, in order to import the rubric sample blueprints, we need to run the following command. VRA content import. And then we're simply going to specify the path to where that zip file we just downloaded is, as well as a resolution, which means what are we going to do if that content's already there? Right? Do we want to keep it? Do we want to skip it? We're going to choose to overwrite. And then a few things around you know, the verbosity of the text that's returned. So we're going to go ahead and run this. And this is going to import our sample blueprints into our vRealize automation instance. All right, so we're all done, and we can see there the eight things were successfully imported into our vRealize automation instance. So let's go in there and see exactly what happened. Okay, so here we are in my VRA instance, and we'll head to the design tab and take a look at what was imported. So the first thing in resource actions, we can see five different rubric resource actions that are now imported into our VRA instance. So things like recovering files, performing instant recoveries, taking on-demand snapshots, all of these items can now be set up as entitlements within VRA, which will essentially allow users to perform these functions on their provisioned VMs. Meaning a user will no longer have to call IT services or IT operations or whomever in order to simply recover a file. They could simply log into VRA, you know, click on their actions icon on their provisioned virtual machine and select to recover a file. Or change which SLA domain that virtual machine belongs to or even perform instant recoveries or live mounts for testing and development purposes. So let's go ahead and add these things to an entitlement so we can see how this actually works. Let's say we want to allow our end users to assign their provision resources to an SLA domain, making sure that they're backed up and protected. To do this, we'll head to Administration, Catalog Management, and Entitlements. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this All Access Entitlement, I'll go into Items and Approvals. And under Entitled Actions, I'm going to select to add a new action. I'm going to search on Rubric in order to limit my searches to just Rubric Actions. And we'll go ahead and we'll check the Rubric Assign SLA Domain Resource Action. Click OK. Finish to save that. And now, anybody who has that All Access Entitlement will be able to take their provision resources and essentially assign or change an SLA domain. Now, I already have a deployment under this user, so let's go ahead and take a look at that and see how it works. Under Deployments, 
Here's my Windows 2012 server I deployed 53 minutes ago. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at that. And on the actual VM that it created, VRA 75-03, I'm going to click this Actions drop down here. And as you can see, we now have a rubric assign SLA domain action. So let's go into there and see what this looks like. So we can see a description. This is going to assign a virtual machine to a different rubric SLA domain policy. Perfect. So it's requiring a couple pieces of information here. One, the rubric cluster. There's our cluster A that we actually set up when we configured the vRealize plugin. So we'll select that. And now we can see all of the associated SLA domains within that cluster. So we can go ahead and select one of these. Let's say gold. It's a very important virtual machine and click submit. So the process of actually adding that virtual machine to an SLA domain within Rubrik has now kicked off. And if we head over to VRO, we can actually see the workflow running. So all the VRA resource action workflows with Rubrik are under this VRA underscore resource actions folder. And we can see that the assign SLA domain has actually had one run session. That's the one we just kicked off. And we can go ahead and click at that and look at some different things such as the variables that were set up. We can see our gold AWS SLA domain that we requested and also the virtual machine name that it's trying to assign to that SLA domain. Same with the logs, we can look and see what exactly happened within the workflow run. But for all intents and purposes, this looks like a success. But let me prove it just by logging into Rubrik and actually taking a look at that virtual machine. Okay, so here we are in the Rubrik UI. Let's go ahead and narrow down the results by our virtual machine that we're interested in. We'll go ahead and we'll take a look at VRA 75-03. And as you can see, we are indeed assigned to the gold AWS DND SLA domain. So the resource action within VRA actually worked. So hopefully you can start to see some of the power of actually integrating rubric data management functions with VRA. Using these two software suites together allows you to provide more functionality to your end users and more functionality through that self-service architecture now to learn more about Rubrik's integration with vRealize, head on over to our new Rubrik build. The URL for this is build.rubrik.com, and there you'll find a ton of information on just how powerful the integration between Rubrik and vRealize automation is. So with all that, thanks for watching.